Hey everybody, this is Terry with the Bass Fishing Archives, and I'm out here in my garage uh, unpacking, unpacking boxes. Uh, we've moved a number of times over the last five or six years, and all of my old tackle uh, has been packed up in boxes for quite a long time. And it's about time for me to start unboxing them and maybe sharing some of the stuff with you guys. I know everybody out there likes uh, old tackle, uh, old tackle boxes, old rods and reels and stuff. So uh, why don't we head to it? Uh, what I have today is my old crankbait and spinnerbait box from 1979, 1980. I used the box through probably the mid 90s and it stored primarily the main crankbaits and spinnerbaits that I would use. Uh, it's a Flambeau Adventure 1735 that uh, was given to me as a Christmas present in that 7980 time frame and it's full of uh, goodness right now. So let's uh, let's get on to sharing this box with you. So like I said, uh, we have a, a Adventure Flambeau Adventure uh, 1735 box and it's uh, been through the, the, the wars as they might say. Um, I got this box brand new uh, again as a Christmas gift and no one's ever no one else has ever owned it. It's been me. Uh, all the stickers have uh, been worn off of it. Uh, used this box back in the day before there was actually tackle storage in boats. Uh, the front depth didn't extend past the uh, the, the the pole insert, and uh, this is what we got going here. And uh, we open it up, and what you see is it's full of my old tournament tackle gear. Pretty cool. Um, but real quick, what I want to do is I'd, I'd like to go through uh, some Bass Pro Shops catalog because I, I I thought that I got the thing in you know, the 79, uh, 80 time frame. And so I wanted to find, uh, you know, some, some documentation that this box was made back then. And so the first thing I did is I went to the Bass Pro Shops uh, catalog 1976 and Bass Pro that year did not sell any uh, Adventure tackle boxes or Flambeau products. They didn't send uh, sell them in 78 or 82 uh, And so I ended up going to the 84 catalog and what I found was that They had that box advertised as new in 84 and I was pretty sure that there's no way in heck. I mean it, it, it can't be new I know I got that box way prior to that so uh, my next uh, deal was, okay, well, let's look in some other different magazines to see uh, when this box came out. So, I, you know, you guys are familiar with uh, The Outhouse. We did that piece back a few weeks ago on uh, Ray Scott's Outhouse uh, mail order catalog. And lo and behold, what we have here is a Flambeau Adventure 1735 tackle box. Uh, except that one's green and the insert is clear and mine is brown and the inserts are gray so what we have here is the actual uh, right up and uh, they're selling it for $12.99 now I believe that my mom bought this for me for like 19 bucks probably with my discount but anyway pretty cool so then I decided okay well if the 70 Seven had it in there. I wonder if the 79's got it. So, yep, lo and behold, Adventure 1735. Unfortunately, it's in black and white, so we can't see the color. But looking at that black and white pick, you can still see that the uh, the crankbait and spinnerbait rack is clear. So, the Bass Pro Shops one, remember, was. next page was an orange box with an orange uh, rack so I believe that I'm right uh, this box here was made in the uh, 79 to 80 time frame and uh, I'm real happy to still have it and let's uh, get into what is in this thing all right so now we got the uh, the box and we got some decent lighting out here in the garage and uh, what's in this thing? So, 
start right off. Uh, these again were all cranks that I would use uh, in tournaments down in Southern California and also into uh, Idaho uh, when I moved there from SoCal in 93. Uh, so there's uh, an old FR7 fat wrap in, in crawdad color. Uh, teeth marks galore on the, on the thing. Another one in, uh, this is the, the, the silver pattern fat wrap, uh, and this came out uh, after the original shad colored one, and I got one or two of them in there that, that I'll pull out and show you. The, this is again an FR7, the larger size fat wrap, and the one that was sitting right next to it is actually the old shad pattern. And this one was actually painted, uh, we had a guy that, at the, that would come into the shop that would paint uh, our cranks, and this one actually has a green uh, pearlescent clear coat put on top over it. Uh, but that is the original that's not foiled, whereas this one here is foiled. Um, and so this bait right here dates to pre-1981, maybe 1982. Uh, so this is a, an, older, an older fat wrap. Um, the next ones, let's look and see what we got hanging here. Another uh, FR7, uh, again teeth marks all over it. Uh, the hooks haven't, the hooks have actually been changed. I changed these hooks probably back in the, I don't know when. It's, it's been quite a while ago. Uh, what do we got here? We got a, an old uh, chrome black uh, back original Storm Wiggle Wart. Uh, it actually says uh, Wiggle Wart on, under the bill. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got going on? Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> that bait hasn't been used. So that's an old Norman. Uh, these are probably, again, mid-80s. Uh, it's an old Norman reflecting in in baby bass pattern. Uh, another fat wrap that you've already seen. Uh, chartreuse fat wrap, that thing was a killer uh, when it first came out and I think it was 81 when that bait came out and it's caught a few fish. We got a smaller, so this is the FR5. So you have the seven and then you have the five and you can see the size difference here. And both were amazing baits. We primarily throw these on uh, eight and ten pound line uh, in the Southern California area. It was always better to go with light line. You really had no wood or anything to hang up on uh, or a fish to run you into, so uh, the lighter line always seemed to, to work out better for us down there. Um, got a, a crawdad in uh, an FR5 and it's pretty banged up too. And then Let's just turn the box to see where we're going here. So, again, another FR5 in, in gold. We got a, an FR5 in silver. Uh, uh, another Norman reflecting in in uh, crawdad. It was a uh, brown back with an orange belly. And then this was the chartreuse one with the orange belly. Come on over here to uh, this side. We've got an old lead lip. You can see the, uh, the, the lead lip there. Uh, DB3. So this bait is pre-78, maybe 79. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty rare color. But you can see as with, the, with the, these original balsa bees with the lead lip, that bill is split. And uh, can't really throw it anymore without fear of it breaking. This is a newer balsa bee, so this would probably be in the 83, 84 time frame. Again, the lip does not have the lead, uh, the lead uh, pellet in it. And then we got another original storm wiggle wart. Another balsa bee lead lip. Again, that, that lip there is, uh, is all busted out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. The old uh, Chartreuse Craw uh, Bagley's. This one's actually in good shape. The, the lip isn't broke, but 
you can see where the uh, the lead has pulled away from the the uh, the lip there. So I caught a couple fish on that. An original killer B2. Uh, <laughs> all these lips are broken, which was a huge problem. Another lead lip. Balsa B. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, just pull them all out. Another lead lip. That one's in good shape. Part of the problem with these uh, balsa bees is again they're made out of uh, out of balsa wood, obviously. And so if you hit any rock or anything, you'd, you'd always ding them up. That bill's good. And then we've got another one. That that bill's good too. One of the problems with this box is that they don't like to come out. Yeah, okay, so another DB1, Bill's in good shape, rainbow trout. Let's see, you got a diving honeybee here in red craw. That one's in pretty decent shape. Oh, yeah. That's what started it all for you. Well, it's not what started it all, but this is one of the bigger sellers. Uh, this is a BB4. Uh, back when uh, this is the bait that he was making. So he, he started out making the Bangalore, and then uh, during the, the, the early square bill uh, craze with uh, Fred Young and the Big O, they started making the BB-4 and the BB-3. And this is an original BB-4. I bought this at the Castaic Mini Mart in, I wanna say around 75 or 76, and it came in a box, a clear plastic box, uh, before they started using uh, the, the, the card stock. And uh, it's been thrown, there's been fish caught on it, and it's pretty banged up, but it's in good shape for actually have been used. Let's see, what else do we got in here? Uh, newer DB2. When I say newer, these are all pre-90. Oh, here's a good one. Lead lip, peacock. That's a that's a cool color, and you can see I never changed out the hooks on the thing. These are original Bagley's hooks from the from the 70s. All right, let's see here. We got uh, another honeybee, another DB2 and craw, red craw. The honeybee, I caught a lot of fish on this thing. I wish I could still find these. I wish they made them still. Uh, I didn't particularly catch many fish on the shallow running honeybee, but the deep diving honeybee, which didn't really go that deep, it only went about four feet. Uh, I caught a ton of fish on this thing. In fact, I uh, won a tournament, a club tournament at uh, San Antonio Lake on this thing. And uh, I've got about, I don't know, probably eight or nine of them left, but they're all destroyed. So. All right, so maybe look into some spinner baits here. So at the, the front here, I always would store my spinner baits without the skirts. My skirts and extra blades and stuff would uh, always be stored in a different box, like a, a 3400 Plano single side. And the reason was is because the flat rubber skirts that used to come on these, once you got them wet, they would stick together and they were pain. So I would store my skirts in a separate box and my blades in another, and it was easy enough for me to pull out the, the, this box and get my blades out and, and put the skirt on the bait that I wanted that was still good. Uh, this is an old Markey. This was made in uh, Southern California, I believe Downey, California. Uh, and it is the first bait that I know of that actually had a shad head on it. This is uh, vintage 76, 77 through probably 83. And uh, quarter ounce bait, uh, you can see the uh, the hook on it is uh, old school. It's a sprout, old sprout hook, and uh, it was a, a really good bait. Another uh, quarter ounce uh, marky, and then here we got a, a half ounce marky. Quite a bit bigger head, uh, but still the same size hook, but they work for back in the day. They work pretty good. Then we got 
uh, one of, in my opinion, one of the best spinner baits ever made. Uh, Jimmy Houston's Red Man spinner bait that was made by Norman. Uh, the thing I like about the spinner bait is the line tie. Uh, you have no chance of getting your line caught uh, in in the uh, the bend of the wire, as with most other spinner baits, and. It doesn't have an R bend, and so the line can't slide either down or up the arm of the blade. Uh, it's just there, and there's nowhere for it to go, and it's not going to get crimped. Uh, real light wire spinner bait, and Norman and Houston were the first to incorporate a double cupped blade on their their spinner baits. So that was a quarter ounce. This here is a single spin in uh, in three eighths of an ounce. That thing's caught a few fish. I uh, really, really liked the red heads. Most of the most of the ones. Oh, this one doesn't even have a blade on it. Um, this one here is a quarter ounce, and uh, they made uh, quarter ounce and three eighths ounce. I don't believe they made a half ounce. Uh, what do you got here? Okay, this is a Smitty. This is a local Southern California blade. It's a Smitty spinner bait made on a lot uh, thicker wire. And this here is a, I believe that's a Fluttercraft, another local, <coughs> excuse me, Southern California bait. <coughs> and then, what do we got back here? Ah, yeah, good old Norman triple wing buzz bait. The uh, first company that I know of to, to, to make the triple wing, uh, these are quarter ounce baits. Uh, again, they made these in, in quarter ounce and half ounce. And let's see, what do we got back here? Ah, here we go, Stanley Viber Shaft. That's, that's another uh, amazing bait. And this one's probably from the, the early 90s based upon the paint. There's an older Stanley Viber Shaft. When Lonnie Stanley developed that, uh, the spinner bait, the thicker wire down uh, going into the head and then the arm that had the blade, I mean, the, the wire is actually uh, machined or, or pulled to where it is a, a thinner wire up here, which gives you a lot more action with the blade, a lot more vibration. Uh, and that really kind of changed the face of spinner rate fishing back in the, in the late 80s and early 90s. Okay, that's a newer Stanley Viber shaft. And uh, I think that's about it. Um, well, I hope you guys uh, like looking into that old uh, Flambeau Adventure 1735 crank and spinnerbait box. And uh, we'll see you next time.